Thanks for joining the show today. I have a local guest uh, visiting with me this afternoon and I'm excited to share his story. I met him in a coffee shop and since then have taken a liking to his work. His name is Sherrod DeLong and he is on the show here from Wenatchee, here right here in our area. So thanks for being here. I always like to feature locals on the show whenever I can. Thanks for having me. So we met in a coffee shop uh, through a mutual friend here recently and I heard you were having um, a show coming up with your work, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. And just, I'm always interested in an artist's story, how you got to where you are, how you learned to do what you do. And so let's just start by introducing yourself to our audience in terms of where you started out. And we, we have some fun stories to tell from your time in New York and Los Angeles. Sure, yeah. Well, um, I think I've been artistic my whole life. Um, and I, I think my mother is mainly responsible for that. Um, she like had all these art books and was, I think, thinking about pursuing that in college. So when I was growing up, I had all these literature lying around. And so that was always with me. And I explored um, just kind of that idea as I kind of grew up. And then out of high school, I decided to go have all these adventures and whatnot, so. Um, when you were a kid, were you, did you paint? Did you watercolor? Did you do oh, yeah. art projects? Yeah. That was a common thing in your home. Did you or anyone around you recognize that you had a talent at that point? Did yeah. Easily for you? Yeah, yeah. I remember when I was really little, um, I entered this competition to, to, uh, to do a, like a drawing or a painting to be on a calendar. I think it was an apple blossom thing at the time, but it was an elementary school program. So I, I, I drew an eagle or an osprey or something catching a fish out of the water and I submitted it and then they told me I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, that's a compliment. I remember submitting something I had written for like Teen Magazine or something. And I got the same letter saying that they only took an, um, original work so they couldn't publish it. And I'm, well, what do you do about that? Because it was my original work right <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, so you're good enough that they didn't think it was possible you did it yourself how old were you then approximately oh gosh uh, it was like in first or second grade or something okay so early very early yeah did you have any teachers before leaving high school or along the way who influenced you or encouraged you in your artwork um here and there just i i um I don't know, like I was always kind of um, doing my own thing in class and that made my teachers kind of pretty frustrated and uh, I kind of um, walked to my own rhythm, <laughs> but um, I think my, my teachers generally liked me, but um, I, I was just a very independent kid. And, um, but yeah, artistically, I always um, had an affinity towards towards that um, and uh, and that that kind of stayed with me throughout and you grew up in Washington <clears throat> yeah yeah I grew where up here in Washington did you grow up uh, here in Wenatchee oh right here in Wenatchee yeah. okay so you left for a bit and were you going in search of that part of yourself that was just not you know that didn't fit into a certain box here you wanted to go see what else was out there in the world where did you go first well, I got an opportunity to go to New York City and I, nothing had ever really happened to me. So I, I admired all these artists and writers and people that have done things and um, I hadn't done anything. So <laughs> I was like, let's go and let's go figure it out. Let's go survive and let's um, find out what happens. And so what is it like for you um, as a young person man you're about 18 years old i'm guessing at the time yeah i was 19 or 19 or 20 something like that and you yeah. show up in new york city and what do you do first what is well, it what what was the awakening for you at that point right yeah well i think the first thing that happened is i got my bike stolen and then <laughs> oh, no. yeah and then um and then i was just uh just really hustling hard to survive um and <clears throat> that was during the uh, financial crash and all that. 
I, I wouldn't have known because I was already like struggling, um, you know, with just trying to make it. And were you going there thinking I'm going to improve my art, my artistic talents? Were you going there to become an artist or were you going there just to have more life experience that could contribute to your art? I think just more life experience. Um, I knew what I was always interested in. I knew all those things were happening in New York. Um, and I ended up making lots of friends and participating in a lot of those things. Um, <clears throat> but my initial motivation to go was just to, to go. <laughs> Somewhere else, do some other things. Yeah. So when you went from New York to LA, what, how long were you in New York City? I was in there about two and a half, almost three years, I think. Yeah. What do you think is the, what, what is the one thing you think you gained the most from being there? Um, I got like a really great cultural um, window into the larger world and I got to see a lot of great art and I got to be around a lot of um, really talented, ambitious people. Um, and so it kind of, it, it broadened my world and um and that's where you began painting right i made some art in new york but i was actually roommates with this guy who was um like the only full ride scholarship master's student at one of the art schools in brooklyn and i just watched like vicious arguments and all kinds of things happening between him and his other artists and it was intimidating like <laughs> It was not. It was not a um, a very welcoming environment to to step into the in, in, into my own power, like as an artist at that time. Um, it kind of gave me a very um, harsh view of the art world, um, and but that was interesting. Um, <clears throat> I, so it it I was too busy like trying to survive and just trying to like. I had all kinds of jobs, like I was a projectionist at an art house movie theater and I rented apartments in Brooklyn and I um, waited tons of tables and um, just you name it, you know. Just to make it. Well, oh, let's yeah. take a break when we come back. I want to hear about your transition to Los Angeles and that's when you really started getting more creative and having more of those opportunities. So. We're going to take a break and come back and talk some more with you. We're talking with Sherrod DeLong about his journey to the artist he's become and his upcoming show in Wenatchee. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, everyone. I'm talking with Sherrod DeLong. He's a local artist here in Wenatchee. I met him in a coffee shop about a month ago, and um, he reached out. We talked about having him on the show because he has... Uh, a show coming up here in our community, uh, August 6th, you said, yep. and we'll get more into that here toward the end of the show. But let's talk about, you've lived in New York for a couple of years, you left to get some life experience, and then you moved to Los Angeles. Is that what, what made you decide to go to Los Angeles from New York, and what were you seeking in that environment that would be different from what you were getting in the city? Uh, yeah, there's uh, something that was always intriguing to me about Los Angeles and a, a number of artists that inspired me from there and um, something about the light and the, just everything about it. And I had an opportunity to go there. And um, so it was, I, again, I think a continuation of my adventures. Um, and so I went there and there was so much about it that I, that I just absolutely loved. I really, really loved the light down there. Um, and I kind of thing that people don't really think about, right? Someone like myself, I'm not a an artist by any means, and so I wouldn't think about that. So, what what do you mean by that when you say you love the light there? The the angle of the sun and the way like the the fog and atmosphere comes in off the ocean um, is incredible. There's like a whole other feel to it, um, and it's 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 very romantic and atmospheric and moody and beautiful and um so you felt inspired there i did yeah i did feel very inspired there and what was different about that from how you felt about new york so maybe from new york you gained 
some of the grit experience, but then now you're in Los Angeles and you can see things a little differently. Yeah. Um, and in some ways, I kind of feel like Los Angeles at that time was maybe everything New York City used to be, <laughs> but, which was like a really diverse city um, that still that was at the time still you could kind of uh, survive and afford to live there a little bit more. Um, and um, and yeah, it just um, it had a much more um, varied strata of people and instead of just uh, you know rich people um, <laughs> who can afford you know super expensive apartments and things exactly now let's look behind you so you you started that's an example of your those are oil paintings correct yeah yeah the one on um, the one to my right is a painting I did from my highway 97 show at the Mac gallery at the college and the one to my left is from uh, the Streetlight show that I did um, before the pandemic, uh, back in 20, fall of 2019. So. I looked at those on your website and each one was more beautiful than the next in a different way. And I found it super interesting because many of us can recognize these different areas of our little city mm -hmm. and it helped me see it in a different way. Maybe much like you're describing seeing the light differently in Los Angeles, I look at those street lights differently now since seeing those paintings. Yeah, looking at things differently um, is one of the things I think art can do really well. And um, it kind of reminds me of The Wizard of Oz and how like she says, there's no place like home and like the return to home and seeing your home with, with new eyes. Um, and it's kind of interesting that my return to home coincided with my art career sort of growing. And, um, and I think that's an interesting bit of synchronicity. Um, but and a lot of people think too, you would think that New York or LA would be where your career would grow. And I think that sometimes that's a hang up for people living in a small community like Wenatchee. And I always say you can accomplish anything you want in this town. You really can. Um, you can be and do all things. And I think that's true of anywhere we are, especially in today's world, right? Because you're not limited to this space. There's this whole world like you and I having this conversation. What did you gain by coming home that contributed to your art? That new set of that you, you kind of went out and got that life experience that lets you see things differently. What did you see differently? Um, I think I saw myself differently. Um, and I think returning home highlighted those things that um, it, within me that changed and that evolved. And um, yeah, it's, uh, I think being back here too, uh, it brought things into a more introspective place. And it kind of gave me the space and the time to, to dream a bit more and to kind of be in my, my own internal world and to kind of observe how I saw things and how those things were different than um, the way other people saw them. Um, and did could, removing yourself from like, the grind of city life help you too? I mean, it settles you down a bit, right? For yeah. you to take that moment and think or notice things differently. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think you need free time to be able to dream I, I think that's vital. Um, you need to let your mind kind of wander and you need to be able to, you know, kind of stare out the window for a while without feeling any pressure to do anything and sort of like making like, your rent in New York City. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Precisely. Yeah. What advice do you give to young artists who are here and think, you know, maybe they won't have the opportunity to leave Washington or leave Wenatchee or leave wherever they are watching this and go gain some of that life experience. What do you, what advice do you have for people who still have those big dreams that they want to achieve and have some talent that, that they may want to develop and not sure. again? Yeah, I'd say to them um, to read and expose yourself to as much art as you can um, and find out what kind of directions that you gravitate um, and 
I would encourage them to to really find out who they are as individuals specific and and be as specific as they can about it. Um, I think the the more specific we are about what makes us unique, um, the more interesting and the more relatable um, the there are voices and you know people's artwork can be. Um, it's kind of interesting. I think some people think that they have to make something that they think might be universally liked or to be general and, and be broad about um, their work. But um, I found that the opposite is true. So my advice would be find out specifically like who you are, what makes you different. And utilize that. One of the yeah. things that I think is true too is as a writer, people often ask me, how do you become a writer? And someone once said, well, you already are a writer. It's a different thing to become an author, right? To be someone who, that's a business. And a lot of people don't know that. It's more marketing than anything once the book is written. But my advice always is, well, you have to start writing. <laughs> and yeah. if I looked at my first book compared to the book, my second book compared to the edits I'd want to make on that second book, you know, if I got stuck in that I wasn't quite ready or wasn't quite good enough or hadn't honed my craft enough, I never would have done a single thing. So I'm sure that you can look back at some of your paintings the same way, uh, just in just it, just like how I form a paragraph or a sentence now compared to how I did 20 years ago on paper. What have you noticed the most about the transition of your work from your early days to now? What are the finer points that you see? Sure. Um, I've seen my, um, my, my focus um, narrow and kind of be more specific towards subjects. And I, I've gotten more interested in specific uh, subjects and specific phenomenon. Um, at the beginning, I, I would paint anything. Like, and I did. I, and I think that's great. Um, I would like pause a movie or something and then try to draw that and paint that or I would um, you know paint my shoes like sitting there on the floor um, it's like it's like the equivalent of like photographers that photograph their own feet or something you know like you just you just do whatever you can you paint a picture of your shoes not paint your act on your actual shoes that's right <laughs> <laughs> So let's take a break and when we come back, I want to hear more about the work you've done here in our community and also the show that you have coming up at the Collapse Gallery. So we'll take a break. We're talking with Sherrit DeLong and we'll feature his work throughout the show. We'll be back in just a moment. We've been talking with Sherrit DeLong. He is a local artist right here in our community. I've um, I've been looking at your work on your website and we can see two of your oil pieces right behind you there. Uh, I want to know, you are now someone who's come home to Wenatchee after living in New York, living in LA, getting the inspiration and life experience that you were seeking. And now you work, you, you work full time as an artist. So you, that's how you earn a living. Yeah. So you, do you have prints that people buy or mostly are you commissioned to paint things? Uh, how do you, how does that work as an artist here in our, in our small town? All the above. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, it's a uh, word of mouth. People will recommend me to uh, new clients and, um, and I'll do commissions from anything ranging from like small portraits for family members to like a big painting, you know, for like a living room and, um, or a hallway or a big space. Um, so I'm, I'm, I've gotten very lucky that I've been able to survive on, in this way. <laughs> and, um, and, I, and also I do uh, the gallery shows, but so it's just a combination of all these things. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful. It's good to have, uh, I call them buckets of passion, you know, different ways to earn a living, especially these days, right? If there were any one thing you were doing that you couldn't do anymore and that was your only way to earn a living that's that's a tough that's a tough way to yeah. go but as an artist um you have to diversify it yourself and figure out different ways that makes that work do you have a favorite painting or a favorite uh method of painting or both 
Like a favorite painting of my own? Yes, that you've done. Oh, um, I don't think I do. Like I. Is that like fav having a favorite child? Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> um, yeah, there's aspects of all of my paintings that I that I love and that I learn from and. Um, and it, even in my most recent work, um, I see things I like, but I also see things that I need to grow on. And uh, it's a constantly evolving process. And it's very much like a mirror to life itself. And there's parts that we like, and there's parts that that we scare us, and parts that are you know need improvement. So um, the most important thing is just to keep doing the work. Well, let's talk about your uh, Collapse Gallery coming up. So that's happening all the first week of August, beginning the first week of August, August 6th. And then how long does it go? It'll be up throughout the month of August. Perfect. So tell us about that. Sure. Um, well, I was looking for a, su a subject for my next show. And at the time, I was taking photos and studying the sagebrush landscape out here in Wenatchee because it, there was something beautiful and kind of spiritual about these plants and and one day the elevator was out so I live on the top floor the sixth floor of a tall building um, so I usually take the elevator but this time it was out so I took the stairs and I was like wow um, I was, it just hit me how beautiful this this place was the way that it was, it was kind of like life, but distilled into its simple elements with just light and geometry. And there was something almost kind of church-like about the that environment. So I became pretty obsessed with it. And I would um, go in and different times of morning and evening and take photos and, and and just explore um, the different points of view that I could have in that space. Um, and the more I explored it, the, the, the stronger the feeling got. And so I was like, I have to, I have to paint this. <laughs> um, There's something about it that reminded me of just the process of seeing um, and thinking and the way kind of the windows and the stairwell would pull in the color of the sky and then project it onto the walls. Uh, almost kind of like how our eyes pull in the color and, and project it in, onto our interior world. And, and the, the stairs kind of had this spiraling, traveling kind of thought to it that reminded me of, you know, the way we kind of travel in our minds and, um, isn't that just, interesting just from from your elevator not working <laughs> right yeah, you might yeah. have the opportunity so the collapse gallery will be up beginning august 6th all through the month of august that's right you can view your work there you can yes. also take a look at your work on your website and yeah. just I'm really glad to have someone like you in our community who's like i you've shared gone off and done some things and come back home and then you're giving this gift to all of us with your work so thank you so much for reaching out and thanks for being on the show and sharing your story and all of your work. And I wish you the very best at your show. Thank you. Happy to be here.